So in the last video, you followed the microchip from conception to fabrication. In this video, you will see how the microchip, which has been moving technology forward for the past 50 years, has evolved from a simple integrated circuit with a few transistors to a complex component that is being manufactured in sophisticated ways. Before moving forward, I have to make one amendment. In the previous video, it is stated that this lesson is going to be a two-parter. But after considering the volume of information, I believe it is best to make it three. So the next and final video will focus on the future of the microchip. With the vision of a monolithic electronic device realized, the future was now primed for innovation. Soon, these integrated circuits, which were starting to take on more and more complicated tasks, were being implemented in things like sensors and amplifiers. But some went in a different direction. These became your microprocessors and your microcontrollers, and their designs were based upon Boolean logic. For those who may not know, Boolean logic is a form of algebra that only uses the values of true and false, or on and off, or one and zero. The point is, regardless of having only two values, this form of algebra can be used in arithmetic. So these logical calculators, or let us just go ahead and call them microchips, could be used in systems that require the solving of complex problems. For example, missile guidance and space exploration. Ventures that were being explored in the 1960s by NASA and the Air Force. But as the technology progressed, the commercial sector started taking notice. A company, which would become the juggernaut Intel, released the first commercially available 4-bit processor in 1971, known as the Intel 4004. This trend continued with the 8008, the 8080, and the 8088. Now a new form of microchip was beginning to reveal itself. It would come to be known as the Central Processing Unit, or simply the CPU. By the mid-1980s, the CPU was on the rise, giving birth to a new category of devices called the personal computer. The i386, a now 32-bit CPU created by Intel, debuted with over 275,000 integrated transistors. This volume would only continue to increase into the present, defining modern-day technology. So how are microchips made? Many may feel that the manufacturing process of microchips is akin to alien technology. But surprisingly, it shares similarities with photography, where light is used to transfer an image onto a photosensitive surface. So here's a gross simplification of the manufacturing process. Pure silicon is first transformed into monocrystalline ignits, which are then sliced into thin wafers. Each wafer initially starts out as two layers and is treated to remove contaminants. More layers are then added to the wafer, including a photoresist solution which reacts to light. After baking in an oven for a while, the wafer is removed and exposed to geometrical patterns of intense light. Any part of the photoresist layer that comes in contact with the light is dissolved away, imprinting the patterns onto the surface. Now you may be asking, what are these patterns? Well, these are engineering designs of electronic circuits. And what the light is doing is carving a mold from the photoresist layer. Here's something to keep in mind. The light's wavelength determines the degree of complexity of the circuitry that can be cut into the photoresist surface. This simply means that the shorter the wavelength is, the greater the number of electrical components that can be added to a given area. Now, as the light dissolves portions of the photoresist material, it exposes a layer below called the oxide layer. By using a liquid chemical agent, which is dispersed into the newly created cavities, the exposed layer is dissolved, etching the geometrical patterns into the silicon wafer. The remaining photoresist layer is no longer needed and is removed. You should keep in mind that this is not a one-time deal. A silicon wafer may go through many repeats of photolithography and etching before the intended pattern is reached. This is referred to as layering. So what's next? Well, now that there are tiny trenches in the wafer, additional materials can be added to create components like transistors, a process called doping. 
Insulators can also be added as separators and conductors as connectors. All of this will come together to form a complex circuitry, which is the core of the microchip. And that's about it for the manufacturing process. Please remember, this is by no means a complete representation. And for a more in-depth insight, I leave that research up to you.